Hey y'all, how y'all doing? How y'all feeling? I hope all is well with you. There is so much going on and we gonna cover it all. But before we do, you know, I gotta let the intro play. So please make sure you hit that like button while the intro plays. So the trailer has officially dropped for this second part of this season and Mel posted this picture and asked if we seen the trailer. My only thing or question I guess would be why is everyone still in the same outfits as the first go around except for Mel and Martell? I wonder if that's like if there's a reason for that. Or maybe everybody was just content with the picture they had and Mel and Martel. Well, Mel decided to change it up and Martel being a copycat and want to do everything Mel does, he did too. But I digress. But we're going to get into the trailer and we're going to um, break it down because I've seen a lot of things. Some real, some fake, um, some real fugazi, some real shady. So we're going to go through it scene by scene, section by section, and break it on down. So without further ado, let's get into it. Whose voice is that saying that? Because the first time we seen it when the season ended or took a break, in my mind, I thought it was Marcel. But that's clearly not Marceau's voice. So I'm wondering whether it's her husband, Amid, and he was just repeating what Marceau said, and they used that clip. But I was like, wait a minute, who voice is that? <laughs> this is the second time you're comfortable enough where you can have an argument with my wife in my presence. She's been on drugs for a while. You just don't let her come around you anymore. Marceau always involves himself in the ladies' discussion. She ain't lying. Marceau stay in the ladies' discussions, just like in social media. On social media, he stay in the comments of the females. Stay trolling. So she's not lying there, and I'm glad her husband is there to stand up for her because Marceau's not used to that. Marceau thinks he could just speak to women any type of way, and it's supposed to be okay. Now. Amin, which is Kiki's husband, made mention to this is the second time you thought it was okay to kind of step to my wife in front of me. Like, that's a whole other level of disrespect, like, from a man's perspective. Because it's like, you you pretty much spitting in my face when you step to my wife as if I'm nothing. Like, you have no fear or, you know, no respect towards me that you'll step to my wife and think I'm not gonna say nothing like you wow so for that um for those who may not remember the first time was that time they were doing that potato tasting in Bessemer um and I think that's when they were trying to uh pilot a spinoff that was an utter fail and truth be told the only reason why people watched that episode was only because we thought Kiki was going to out Marceau's, you know, dirty laundry. So, you know, Carlos wants to always say, oh, well, it was a high-rated show or whatever, you know, and Wanda and them too. But truth be told, we only watched to see if Marceau was going to get aired out. But, I mean, going back to the subject at hand, Marceau needs to get checked. And based on this premiere, this clip, it don't get no better, y'all. Who child? Take a seat, put on your seat belt, and get ready for this ride. Because Marceau, he's out of pocket. You're valuing what women say. I know you're not used to being valued. 
but I'm telling you right now, you're valued here. Damn, Mr. Let Me Get the Last Word. See, this is that biz naive stuff that Marceau does. He stay coming for women. And I wonder whether he would have had that same smoke had Lou been there. My guess, not so much. But he's such a bitch. Like, it's ridiculous. And the whole, <laughs> okay, couple things. You see Stormy say, dang, Mr. Let um, him have the last word or whatever she said. See, it's fun and games till it's you. And then you feel disrespected. What you should have did, Stormy, was stood up and been like, you're out of pocket. Stop laughing and kikiing about the ignorant-ish he does. And stop acting like it only matters when you're at the other end of the G-U-N, if that makes sense. Like, stop doing this like, ha, 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 oh my gosh, I can't believe he said that. But when it's you... Your feelings, you all butthurt. Your feelings are all tied up in a knot. No, if y'all stood up and stayed together, then I, I guarantee you it wouldn't be an issue because he would know that y'all ain't playing that ish. Now, um, Tisha, you see her doing this whole little rolling of her head like, oh my gosh, and laughing this is what got you cussed out the first time when Storm became for you. Because you stay letting your husband get out of damn pocket with other women. And you just sit there and smile and act dumb. Or maybe you ain't acting so much. But you got to stop doing that. And then when they come for you, you be looking lost. Like, what? I don't know why you have a problem with me. Huh. As much as I don't care for Stormy... I was glad she came for your neck that time because you keep allowing him to get out of pocket with women instead of being like, babe, I got it. Like, don't like don't sit here and argue with a woman when I'm right here. But he ain't got no morals. You ain't got no sense. And you going to get what you going to get. So, again, Tisha, this is why you always end up with the short end of the stick. Not only does... He not respect you, which is funny because the nerve of him to talk about um, not being valued. <laughs> the person you sit right next to, that's the person that's never valued in any room she step in. But, again, he has a nerve to be talking about anyone's life or what they're going through. When he, he's he, like, he ain't got nothing. You ain't got nothing. Like Stormy said a couple seasons ago, you ain't got enough. You don't have enough to be talking about anybody, Marceau. Marceau just kind of, he made that come in of, guess who on scope now? Slap. It wouldn't be no scope without me or Melody. You're a damn lie. Don't downplay what Melody I did for you and, or y'all. In what way did you help me? Marceau. You still owe me $3,700. Look at Chris Fletcher trying to secure his spot for next season, stirring a pot. <laughs> Oh my goodness, but Marceau, again, he, he's forcing it. You mean to tell me they had no dealings in helping you? We know that, first off, you can't spell scold without hold. Yeah, like stop. They helped you when you had no car or y'all. They helped you guys like through and through. Gave y'all a spot to stay in, allegedly. So it's just crazy. Marcel's one of them people you cannot help out because he going to make you regret it every single day of your life. Like, I I mean, I do things out of the kindness of my heart. I don't do it to, um, to get anything back. And I don't think that that's Mel and Martel's goal or, you know what I'm saying? But it's just the the principle the audacity that he keeps coming for them and he keeps saying little slick stuff and it's just like what are you talking about like let's not do this let's not do this it's gotten to the point where just like destiny mel wasn't out here advertising that she gave her money till destiny started saying oh how she's a bad friend and this and that so then she was like how am i a bad friend if i helped you out like I've been there for you. 
showing up, pulling up when you, you know, call me and there's problems, I'm stopping what I'm doing to come check on you. So I think it's one of those where it's not like they intended to rub it in their face, but I feel like Marceau's pulling them into a place where they're like, stop, like, you know, I helped you like, stop, please stop. This money thing is growing legs. Why? Marceau said nobody paid nothing. He's a sarcastic ass. Now, remember when I said some scenes I believe were fake, um, put together, whatever, manufactured, however you want to call, uh, call it, whatever you want to call it. This is one of them. I feel like Marceau and Maurice, I feel like they do have this back and forth, but there's also a put together back and forth. Like, I feel like they have competition between the two of them, i.e., when the fight at Madani happened, because Maurice, in my opinion, because Maurice sided with Martel and said, no, Wanda did say, you know, that, or questioned the paternity of the baby or whatever, I felt like Marceau took it as like a, okay, so you want to say, okay, cool. The next opportunity was at the dinner or that, you know, when the comeback group came together, it was just the six of them. And Marceau made the statement like, I agree with Mel. Maurice's face, after he was sitting there trying to argue Mel down, Marceau crushed Maurice when he said that. His face just dropped like, what? what, what? I feel like they have a back and forth when it comes to that. But I also feel like there's this fake we're beefing or we have a problem thing that they do. I don't know if you guys remember, but it was either before season four. I believe it was before season four started. There was this little back and forth banter on social media where they were acting like they had beef and they were going to expose each other and all of this stuff or whatever. And I think that was literally just for a storyline or to get people in for the show or whatever the case may be. But in my opinion, it was fake. And I think this little, he's a whatever ass. I feel like this is fake too. Like, ugh, they were all grasping for a storyline. The Black Expo next year will be better because we're going to do certain things that you guys said. I so, think we should let Tisha talk. Because what you're doing it is all over the place. Mr. and Mrs. Steele, thank you guys. You know I'm busy. She's still, right? I mean, you know my name. And this is another scene that I'm questioning the reality of it. Just because I feel like to call a man by their wife's maiden name is hella disrespectful so if and Courtney Courtney gives off that he don't play like he don't play right so I don't and I get that this is edited so I'll fully base my opinion when the whole scene plays out but if he don't lose it, yeah, it's given scripted because or planned, pre-planned. Because if you were to call my husband Mr. My Maiden Name, he'd be <laughs> he'd be cussing you out something nice. So yeah, we're gonna have to see how this plays out. But yeah, Marcel's hella disrespectful. If this is real, he mad disrespectful and he yeah he need to catch some hands that's what need to happen but see when it come to men he don't got no he ain't got nothing to really come with he just gonna go get a, a restraining order like he did martell season two well it happened in between season one and season two but it played out in season two see i don't know if you're playing or is you for real? Yeah. Because, see, I'm for real all the time, so is he going to do that? Because if he don't do that, it's going to be a problem. Oh, yeah, anybody can get slapped. What's up with Lou, anyway? I haven't seen Lou. He don't never come on. Now, I'm assuming they were talking about this last scene that I just discussed, and it sounds like Courtney's saying, like, you for real? Like, are you playing with me? Because I don't do that play-play stuff, right? And, again, that's how I kind of take Courtney to be. So we'll see how it plays out. And Martell, you a whole Mitch talking about something. Anybody could get slapped. You out here slapping people. <laughs> that just confirms if there was any question before that you are a whole Mitch, okay? 
Um, but in the beginning of this clip, you also see, again, Tisha doing this little smiling and looking at Marcel like, Marcel, you're so silly. Huh. Okay, let's see how silly he is when he get beat up. Everyone literally keeps asking me, like, where's Lou? Where's Lou? Where's Lou? He just had a baby and I need my husband. So what, you want me to stop working? This is like me saying I want you to stop working when I need you to be more present. We knew what we were getting into before we got into it. Now, I agree and I disagree with Big Lou here. I agree in the sense of Tiffany was just so eager to have a baby. One of the things he always said was, we don't have time. Like, when are, when are you going to make time? Especially, like, you stay busy. Um, and she just wanted a baby. Now, some will call this, I guess, her karma. Now, I disagree in the sense of, I'm still a mother. And I get that she may have put you guys in a predicament, but at the point that you agreed, you understood, or I'm assuming there was some type of understanding um, of the responsibility. So, yes, you may be busy at work, but this is a whole life that depends on you and your wife may, needs you. And, you know, so I do feel like you should carve out a little bit of extra time to be there, you know? Like, especially, <laughs> they grow up so fast, you ain't going to get this time back. So I do feel like he should, and I don't know if he's doing it to teach her a lesson, <clears throat> um, but uh, I do feel like he he shouldn't pun punish her. But at the same time, Sometimes you got to punish people for them to learn their lesson because they feel like if they know they could get over on you, they'll keep doing stuff and push putting you in a corner thinking you're just going to do what they want you to do. So I kind of see both sides of this. Um, but one of the, again, arguments was clearly time. And so, Tiffany, this might be, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but also another question is, were you working the same amount of time, Lou? Because if you're putting in extra time now, now I'm definitely going to be side-eyeing you because, like, if you usually do 40 hours, now all of a sudden you're doing 50, 55, 60 hours, I'm going to be looking at you sideways. Um, But I do feel like, not for her, but for the baby, carve-out time. Like, he ain't asked to be here, and he shouldn't miss out on daddy time. And, again, this is all my assumption because she didn't really say that um, he doesn't spend time with the baby. He, She did say that she needed him. So, again, it goes back to Tiffany. Are you trying to bully him into doing what you want him to do when, he want, when you want him to do it? Inquiring minds want to know. Do you ever feel different? It's just a lot. There are certain things that are not going to happen for me. This is really f***ed up. Tiffany, please do not take any advice from Stormy. <laughs> Although she does have, uh, I would say, a good relationship with Courtney, I think Courtney makes it easy because she definitely difficult. I could tell she difficult to deal with. Look at her mama and then just seeing her. Yeah, mm -mm. Um, I mean, I could say the same with Tiffany. Lou, I feel like, is kind of similar to Courtney, where he goes with the flow. He's easygoing, in my opinion, based on what I've seen. Um, but I think Lou's giving her a little pushback. Making love to your husband and your wife is an emotional bond. If you're not getting that emotional connection at home, chances are you're going to get it someplace else. This lady's insecurity is seeping through her pores. Um... Yes, that is a way for two to connect, right? Two married people to connect, or two people, period. It don't really matter if you're married or not. You're connected once you do that. But you were fighting for your life, literally. You mean to tell me he can't put that aside? He went on a whole podcast saying how it's a need and not a want. Like, and you just play right into it because here you are defending him. And this is exactly why I don't defend Kimmy because she like it, 
I love it. She loves, she loves, loves, loves the abuse that Maurice gives her. She's so desperate, in my opinion, to have someone or something, because I'm not sure that he's a man, um, that she's just, she's going to sit here and make every excuse in the book as to why it's okay that he demands X while she's fighting the fight of her life. Biggest regrets is that I had four kids by a dude that never made me See, and this is exactly why she, <laughs> in my opinion, she had every right. Even though she didn't, she had every right to go cheat. This man out here slanging left and right to anybody with a hole. But meanwhile, ain't even pleasing her, but he want to be pleased. Like, boy, bye. You heard her right. Never. She had him to tell me, too, with multiple guys. Hey, say, I believe that. Don't ever talk about me cheating unless you talk about her cheating. Period. Y'all, stop How about this? Now, I watch body language. When someone says something and they're afraid of what they're saying, they tend to look down or look away. And so when he made his stupid little statement, she's like, I don't know if I believe that. And she's like looking down at her feet and kicking and acting like this dress is in her way. You ain't going nowhere now. Look at him in his face and be like, I don't believe that. All right, stop lying. And for him to always feel the need to bring that up, especially when we have already discovered that allegedly, I still got to say allegedly to cover my page, um, you was out here trying to shop around a video that was of you and your wife and act like it was a different person to make her look like a 304. You still with this narrative? Are you really still trying to pitch this? This ninja really ain't ish. This intimate ceremony for Melody Cherie Rogers. Now, what Wanda Bread always say? Yes to the dress. <laughs> Mel looks so beautiful. I love the gold. The hair was laid. It's a it's a ten out of ten. She did that. But we know that event was bombed because Dr. Shanita came on live and was like, baby, anyone that comes with an event, y'all got some standards to to set because she done set the standard. Y'all got to supersede it at this point. I know we've gone through a lot. I just want us to stay in a really good place. These are for you. From who? From me. For you. From me. Martell, sweetie. No, listen. Yeah, y'all been through a lot because you put her through a lot. Taking her to court, trying to get full custody is ridiculous. Um, and you ain't learned from the other flowers you try to send her that she left in the garage in the trash. Give it up at this point. Like, she wants nothing to do with you. And Mel, don't call that man sweetie because in his head now he is convinced y'all back together. He already saying that y'all separated and not divorced. This man's delusional. Don't call him sweetie. Don't call him nothing nice. Just be like Martel. That's that's it. Don't give him nothing extra. You wearing that ring that I got you in 2008? I'm manifesting. Yeah, I guess you got the memo. Now, I'm assuming this is her own ring because I don't see her wearing anything that he gave her. Um... But I think he's insinuating what he's insinuating because she has it on her ring finger. But wishful thinking. It's, this dude is delusional. He literally said manifesting. You're manifesting. That's why you're putting on your old wedding ring. <laughs> this dude is psychotic, in my opinion. We're going to Houston. Mel, you could have went ahead and left that friendship part off because <laughs> at that group, I think the only one who might be in your corner is Nell. You see Kimmy's insecurities seeping out. No, you're not. 
She meant that. Now y'all in a whole other state, in a whole other town. Martel, where you get this trollop from? I take that back. I don't want to call her a trollop just because I don't know her. You know. Truth be told, he the trollop. Like, where you getting, where you find someone to hook up with already? You just got there. Where's she at this morning? She left early this morning. Next door, getting my makeup done. Sound like somebody's having sex. While we on Martell, did you break any house rules? We had rules. Kimmy always got to come with her cape on when it come to Martell. Um, but is it me or do I? Do y'all feel like it's inappropriate or unnecessary to have those conversations in front of Mel? Like I feel. Not that she cares, but it's just like she may not also care to hear about what he's doing, his extracurricular activities. Like, uh, I think really what it is is that I feel like they bring up these conversations purposely in um, front of her. Like, I think that's where my reservation comes in. Yes. Well, I, don't, I didn't get that, that notice. So ideally, how much sex are you looking for? Um, I guess how much is too much, Doc? So y'all like down to like maybe twice a month like normal married people i just don't believe him like if he wants it truly this much in a day he's giving very much minute man second man or something because who needs that much where am Now, I like that beaded top that she has on. Um, don't care for the lingerie. Uh, strictly degla. No, so, <laughs> um, and this second uh, photo, sh no, actually, this is the third photo shoot picture. Looks cute as well. Um, but, Kimmy, you might want to, you, you know what? I hope this ain't happening around the house because that's why Kiowa had her reservations or was saying the things she was saying then. I ain't knocking you. You look great for your age. Um, but, I mean, as long as it's in appropriate times and places and not in front of your stepson. You know, I was sick a lot, right? Mm -hmm. The last time I remember feeling that way, mm -hmm. I was pregnant. So I had to go take a pregnancy test. Get a blood test that is so disrespectful again i don't understand why people feel like if they treat other people a certain way that they were gonna somehow get some type of special treatment marceau's disrespectful clearly regardless of who he's in contact with or talking to so why are you shocked I i'm i'm just so confused and again this is another one that i was telling you guys in the beginning that I felt was fake. I think it's very disrespectful to get yes. pregnant on your husband got a vasectomy. Marceau and had an affair. <gasps> One night and this other girl went out to the club. Marceau was there. The two of them hooked up with Marceau and had a threesome. It's the face for me. Um, but are we surprised? I'm glad Kiki finally came out with it because she was harboring this little tidbit of tea out I don't know for how long I don't know if this was what she was going to expose that time they had the thing at the potato place or if there's more but Mel acting surprised <laughs> I mean she could genuinely be surprised because she wasn't aware of this one but it's like once a cheat it's always a cheat like you knew he was allegedly dealing with Alonda, so chances are um he did more I'm gonna fuck my jelly ass what the hell happened you cheated on him too Mel did you cheat on him too give me the goddamn answer cause I'm tired of him saying I don't know what you're doing now now you know it has been this man's life mission 
to ruin her. So I wouldn't give two kick kaboots what he says. You just like Martin. Tell him to get the step in. But Nell did <laughs> seem pissed off. She said, I'm a whoop Martell's A. Dang. Listen, them little ones be the ones you got to look out for. They be feisty. <laughs> I never cheated. That's not me. The truth is, I understand both of you. Hey, 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 hey. hey. No, I don't need this. I get that. I don't need this. You stepped out on me. What the hell the f you think I am? If you keep on playing with all me and putting in my goddamn face, I'm not going to accept it. Again. Marceau and Tisha with this fake storyline. First off, Maurice always coming on with his cape trying to defend Tisha or hear her story or whatever the case may be. Oh, please. And then Tisha, I think, honestly, in that clip, she was talking about Kiki saying that uh, Marceau was cheating. But even if she's trying to quote unquote check Marceau, not believable. I feel like this season they're trying to make Tisha look independent, you know, um, make her look like she's, she's clapping back or not clapping back, but well, I guess clapping back, but either way, I don't believe it. And Chris, if you don't get this banshee from yelling in your wife's face, he always gets mad and irate when no one believes his lies and he just starts yelling like a fool. He's ridiculous. <laughs> Now, y'all, please tell me, is this believable? You mean to tell me <laughs> all of a sudden Tisha got balls? I think they're recycling storylines. And when Marceau said that to her season two, they're trying to recreate that. Tisha knows she ain't pregnant. Tisha knows she ain't cheated. Tisha know, like, Tisha know. I just, I cannot with these people. And yeah, I know they call her Get Back Tisha, but I think this is all a facade, my opinion. But y'all, what do y'all think? Let me know in the comment section down below. Are y'all looking forward to the second half of the season? I am. Yeah, damn not. <laughs> no, sir. But let me know what y'all think in the comment section down below. I will catch y'all in the next one. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will catch y'all later. Peace. Let's, I like chocolate girl. All shades, different flavors. She a diamond and a pearl. She a goddess with a mentor, yeah. Cinnamon swirl. She relate to what I've been through, yeah. Queen of my world